Hi, Professor Baldwin here, and today we're going to talk about operations on polynomials. So we're going to add, subtract, multiply all of these polynomials together. Now before we do that, we need to understand some of the language for polynomials. First is the leading term. The leading term is the highest degree term when we write it in descending order. So remember, we always want to have the highest exponent first and go down. The leading coefficient is the constant value of that leading term. And then the degree is the greatest degree of all terms, or what the largest exponent is. Let's look at our examples. First, we have a monomial. And a monomial is a polynomial that just has one term, such as 2x to the ninth. The leading coefficient here is the 2 because that is the constant of that leading term. And the degree is 9 because that is the largest value of our exponent. Now in the second line we have a binomial, which means two terms. Notice we have 10y and negative 7y squared. This isn't written in descending order, so we want to rewrite it first, negative 7y squared plus 10y. Now we can identify that leading coefficient, which is the constant term at the beginning, negative 7. Notice that the negative sign goes with that term. And the degree here is that exponent of 2. And our third example is a trinomial. Tri meaning 3. We have three terms here. Now the leading coefficient. What's the number in front of our very first term? There isn't a number there, but remember we always have that invisible 1. So the leading coefficient here is 1. And the degree, well, our largest exponent, which is on our leading term, is a 6. Now polynomials are similar to these monomials, binomials, and trinomials. Actually, these are all types of polynomials. Poly just means multiple, so there's more terms. So you can see a polynomial that has four terms or five terms. Now in this next example, we have a polynomial with four terms that we're subtracting from a polynomial with four terms. And we're going to subtract and then simplify. First thing to notice, we have parentheses and we have this subtraction in between. So to get rid of the parentheses in the second polynomial, we need to distribute this subtraction through to each of the terms. So our first polynomial can be rewritten as 1 fifth a squared minus 1 half a b. There's nothing outside of the parentheses for that first polynomial, so we can just rewrite everything that's inside. But the second polynomial, we need to make sure we're distributing this negative sign to each term. So a negative, negative 3 tenths becomes a positive 3 tenths a squared. And then the next term is negative 2 fifths ab. And the next changes to 1 half b squared. And the last is a plus 5. Now that we've distributed and we've removed the parentheses, we want to start combining the like terms. And the best way to do this would be to put like terms near each other. So we'll start with the a squareds. We have 1 fifth a squared here, and I like to cross them off as I rewrite them. And then we have this 3 tenths a squared. So plus 3 tenths a squared. Next, we have negative 1 half AB. And any other ABs? Yep, negative 2 fifths AB. We'll cross that off. Then we have B squared. I have a 1 tenth B squared. And I have a 1 half B squared. And then our constants, plus 3 and plus 5. Okay, now that we have written all of those like terms near each other, we can combine them. So first we're going to combine these a squareds. But notice that the coefficients 
are fractions and they're not common denominators. So we need common denominators. Uh, here that would be a 10 and 1 fifth is equivalent to 2 tenths. So we can add 2 tenths and 3 tenths, which is 5 tenths a squared. Now our next group, we have a negative 1 half and a negative 2 fifths for our AB. Again, we need to have that common denominator, so let's change these to tenths. Negative 1 half would be negative 5 tenths, and negative 2 fifths would be negative 4 tenths. And negative 5 tenths minus 4 tenths, remember we add those and we get negative 9 tenths AB. Next, we have the B squared. We have 1 tenth and 1 half. Well, 1 half can be rewritten as 5 tenths. So combining those, we get 6 tenths. Whew, and then the nice one, 3 plus 5. That is 8. Okay, we're almost done. We've combined all of our like terms, but notice that these fractions, at least two of them, can be simplified. So 5 tenths, the 5 and the 10 share a 5 in common, so that simplifies to 1 half a squared. 9 tenths, nothing in common, so that stays as negative 9 tenths a b. 6 tenths, they share a 2 in common, so this simplifies to 3 fifths b squared plus 8. Okay, now let's look at multiplying polynomials together. Here we have two binomials, right? Each of these has two terms, so we're multiplying a binomial times a binomial. And what you're going to do is take the first term of the first binomial and multiply it by each term in the second binomial. So we have 6x times 5 plus 6x times 2x. Now we go to the second term in the first binomial and multiply it by each of the terms in the second binomial. So we have plus negative 1 times 5 plus negative 1 times 2x. Now we're going to actually multiply those together and then we'll start combining our like terms. So 6x times 5 is 6 times 5, 30x. 6x times 2x, well 6 times 2 is 12, and x times x is x squared. Negative 1 times 5, that's negative 5, and negative 1 times 2x is negative 2x. Now we look to see if we have any like terms that we can combine. We have a negative 2x and a 30x. Those combine to give us 28x. And we have the plus 12x squared minus 5. Looks good, right? Yes and no. Mathematically it's correct, but the math grammar isn't really correct. We want this in descending order. So we want that largest exponent, the 12x squared, to be first. And then we want the plus 28x and then the minus 5. Now in example 2, we're multiplying a binomial, two terms, by a trinomial, three terms. We're going to use the same process, start with the binomial in the front, Take that first term and multiply it by each of the terms in the trinomial. So we have x times x squared plus x times negative 3x plus x times 9. Then we take the second term in that binomial and multiply it by each of the terms in the trinomial. 3 times x squared plus 3 times negative 3x 
plus 3 times 9. Now let's multiply each of these pieces. x times x squared is x cubed. x times negative 3x is negative 3x squared. x times 9 is 9x. Here we have a 3x squared. 3 times negative 3x is a negative 9x. And last, 3 times 9 is a positive 27. Okay, now we need to look at our like terms. And let's group those together. So first we have that x cubed, okay? And then squared, so we have negative 3x squared, and we have a plus 3x squared. Then we have a plus 9x and a minus 9x, and our constant plus 27. Now let's combine those like terms, since they're grouped together. x cubed, that's our only x cubed. x squared, well we have negative 3x squared and a positive 3x squared, so those cancel each other out. Next we have 9x and minus 9x, those cancel each other out. And last, we have plus 27. So this binomial times trinomial simplified down to x cubed plus 27. Now before we get into this visual problem, we want to review these special case products. You may have seen these before. The first is called the product of conjugates, or the difference of squares. When you multiply conjugates, what that means is the first term of each binomial is the same, and the second term is the same. The difference is that one is positive and the second is negative. Those are conjugates. You multiply conjugates and you end up with a difference of squares, which is that first thing squared minus the second thing squared. Next, you have the square of a binomial. So if you take a binomial and you square it, whether it's positive or a negative binomial, you end up with a perfect square trinomial. We're going to see a couple of examples here with this rectangle. Part one, we want to come up with the perimeter. Remember that perimeter is two times the length plus two times the width. We're adding all of the sides together. Well, to do that, I want to simplify each of these first. The length here is 5y plus 2x plus 3. I can just remove the parentheses. But the width, I have a negative on the outside, so we're going to distribute that negative through. And we get 5y minus 2x minus 3. Now we can use that formula for perimeter. We have 2 times the length, which is 5y plus 2x plus 3, plus 2 times the width, 5y minus 2x minus 3. Let's distribute the 2 through each of these parentheses first, and we get 10y plus 4x plus 6 plus 10y minus 4x minus 6. Do you see what happens? This plus 4x and this minus 4x cancel out, and this plus 6 and minus 6 cancel out. So we're left with just 20y for the perimeter. Now in part 2, we want to look at finding the area. Remember the area is doing length times width. So our length is 5y plus 2x plus 3, and our width is 5y minus 2x plus 3. This should look familiar. This is the product of conjugates. This first thing, 5y, is the same in both the length and the width. And the second thing, 2x plus 3, is the same in the length and the width. 
And the only difference is that sign. We have a plus for our first binomial and a minus for our second binomial. That means we can use the product of conjugates, which says a plus b times a minus b equals a squared minus b squared. Our a here is 5y, so we have 5y squared minus our b, which is 2x plus 3 squared. Well, we're going to multiply 5y to the power of 2. Remember, you use the power rule and you distribute that to each of these bases, 5 and y. So that is 25y squared minus 2x plus 3 squared. Now, look at this thing, 2x plus 3 squared. This is taking a binomial and squaring it. And if you remember that above, the square of a binomial is a perfect square trinomial. So this becomes a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, where our a is the 2x and our b is the 3. So then our middle term is 2 times our a, 2x, times our b of 3. Remember, this whole thing is being is subtracted from 25y squared. OK, a little more simplification. We keep that 25y squared. We have the subtraction. Let's simplify everything in these brackets. 2x squared is 4x squared, because the 2 gets distributed via that power property to the 2 and the x, plus 2 times 3 is 6 times 2x, that's 12x, plus 3 squared, that would be 9. Now we have to distribute this negative sign outside of the parentheses, and we get 25y squared minus 4x squared minus 12x minus 9. So we just found the area of that image above. And notice how different the area and the perimeter are. The area has squares and the perimeter does not. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, I hope that you will check out some of my other math videos.